guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Frost from QGN and today we are back again to you guys with the fall of the house of Asha, 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 Asha. Episode 4, The Black Cat. That's how mm. because there's a black cat at our door. Yes. <laughs> But he's not allowed to come in. No, no. So last episode, Camille met her end. Uh, she wanted to find the truth behind what Victorine was doing. She wanted to prove that she was not the perfect little girl and stuff with her perfect little project. Mm. And so, but she lost her assistance because they rebelled against what she asked. What she was asking of them, and, and she fired them only because they fell in love with each yeah. other. And so she had to investigate on her own. She ended up at the lab, and she met Verna who she was there, but she wasn't actually the one of the chimps that was in prison there. And uh, the chimp got loose and it, it destroyed uh, Camille, she killed her. So yeah, uh, we kind of figured out, well, I mean, we didn't figure it out, it's kind of obvious, but uh, we, you, we, you... yeah, we talked about it and I said, uh, a lot of the those titles reminded me of Edgar and Poe's short stories. Well, that's that, right. That cat. <laughs> Tet and Hart. Well, no, every Raven. title of episode in this show is a story by Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. And not only that, every story, every title here fits with what's going to happen to the kid. Mm -hmm. So... Like the one with the murder in red. Prospero. Prince Prospero was killed by a lady in red. A murder at Rue Morgue. Same story, uh, a mother and her children were killed by uh, an, an orangutan. A orangutan. French here, so like, a long time. By a, uh, by, a, by a champ, yeah. So I don't remember all of the stories like the black cat, so I didn't look it up because the I want to be surprised. The only one we actually know, and so we'll talk about it right there because we don't want to pretend we don't know, it's Telltale Heart. Yeah, we studied it in school, so I remember it. <laughs> now, we, while I was editing episode one, I figured out that every kid is dying from youngest to oldest and we saw the actual order. So I'm pretty sure this one is gonna be Napoleon, which makes sense, black cat. He killed his boyfriend's cat mm -hmm. while he was blacking out, which I think he might again be blacking out this episode, so we'll see. Yeah. But uh, after that, I think Telltale Heart is gonna be Victorine. Yeah. And, and but we know because of the clippings at the beginning of episode one, that it's gonna be a murder-suicide. And since Telltale Heart is a guy who murders someone and get has guilt mm -hmm. about it, we think she's gonna see Verna experiment on Verna and uh, end up fight figuring out it was her, her wife that she killed. Yeah. And she'll kill herself out of grief. That's what that's what I'm expecting. But yeah, as for the black cat, I don't know what's happening here, but we will see. Like I said, he killed his uh boyfriend's cat last episode. So it's gonna have something um, with Gil. And like you said, he's using pretty bad a lot of stuff yeah. right now. And every time one of them dies, there's a choice involved. Like you're gonna die anyway. Like we have this thing, like Verna is probably death, mm. if not the devil, but we think death is more fitting. And she's like, like I'm gonna take you eventually, but you have a choice to take a path here where either you're gonna die peacefully in your bed. <laughs> like choose and, violence. <laughs> or violence, yeah. yeah. So he's gonna get a choice and obviously he's gonna pick the wrong one. So let's jump in this episode and see what happens to him. Don't forget to subscribe, you guys, if you want to see more of these episodes and check out our Patreon for the full length reactions. In the meantime, let's go. <laughs> Pluto! <laughs> I'm looking for a little pussy. Mm. Now, I hate to be this guy, but it's a very specific pussy well, he wants to I need. find a, a one that's similar. Uh, yeah? I need a black cat. Female. Uh, yay big. <laughs> oh. Cutie. I can handle that just fine. Our guests get one week to find a home. My God. This isn't a no-kill shelter. I have a soft spot for the short timers. Always have. Huh. <laughs> that could apply to him. <laughs> These two. Not black, but siblings. I'd ask you to take them both, though. Keep them together. It's important with siblings, really. You keep them together. Oh. Ha ha, Remy, right? No, not available. Siblings. We've already had four applications for her online. He's going to pay what it takes. There are some really lovely cats who won't make it if someone doesn't intervene. Fucking uncanny, isn't it? It's the exact same cat. Like I said, she isn't available. Yeah, yeah, um... He doesn't care. I don't care. think you know who I am. I'm a money bomb, but I'm walking out of here with this cat. It's... I'm pretty sure it's the exact same cat. He looks like Kenna so much. You little fucker, you saved my life. The judgment, though, like, oh. mm -hmm. I guess daddy's out getting a latte or something. <laughs> little cunt. 
coming out to get you. Revenge. Hey, Dad, I'm kind of busy. Your sister's dead. In a horrible, horrible way, too. What the fuck you say? Yeah, and no one can say that again. make a, a publicity out of her death now. No, she's not. Yes, she <laughs> is. Denial. It's amazing how far you can get on denial. You know why so many people use denial to get by? Because it really fucking works. It's easier to not around. to pretend. Like you want to take it it's gotta be important why she keeps texting. Yeah. But other times, it really fucking doesn't. This is fucking off. I mean, what was she doing there to begin with? Maybe the $15 million bounty has something to do with it? The fuck you've been doing to those things, huh? I'm not putting this on me. My wife is in the ICU. She's made. What are we even talking about? Is there is the trial. I, I have to launch. Right oh, God. Yeah. You're all gonna die. Yeah, yeah they don't know. They're not allowed to get those emotions. There's no. always something well, else going on. I'm saddened to announce the loss of our beloved Camille Hispania. That Jeez. sounds heartfelt. It really is. Well, are we going with 35? Fucking robot chip rips off my sister's face, and I'm saddened. Enough, enough. This is not about sticking together. It's about forming a fucking wall. We're at battle stations. I'm the commanding officer. I don't want to hear anything. But sir, yes sir. Have Tammy. Oh, Frederick, do you sound my Don't call me that. Don't like it! Cut me out of the fucking will! Give my share to the next junkie title fight at the ER. Can get out of line here, man. They're not gonna like that. Although I, I respect him for his emotions. That's the first genuine emotion that I heard since the first episode. I have, that's why I say I said I respect him. Oh, no. Is she, she is. dead? I am still in the room. <laughs> The night guard was supposed to be Philip Fasulo. They're gonna recognize off. that she's Someone everywhere. She's always the there. We don't know who that woman is. Do we have audio? We do not. Why the she's fuck not dead. Really she's not dead. She's not Typically, with security cameras. I have always been here. You recognize her? Well, it's a little tough to tell. Tell everyone to take up arms. We are at war. I don't know who, but I know <laughs> what it feels like when a bullet flies by. As sad as it is, it's shot. you. It's but all you. Fuck this one. Just tell me what I can do. I will say, out of all the kids right now, he's done some shit, but he seemed to care about Perry. He seemed to care about Camille. Whoa! It's possessed! <laughs> it flew at him! She was onto a scent, and she was here. Which means she was either onto something to do with the work, or she was onto something to do with you. Or both. She had no Confess! I think that she was looking at the chimpanzees. Or is she? <laughs> Why? Because I think she wanted to torpedo my project. Why? For fun! Should I just pull a plug, but just put this out of its misery, just free up some money for Leo's video games or Tammy's bugs? Okay, well look, we're moving to human trials. Hmm. Okay, that's what I've been waiting to hear. Yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, we're ready. Yeah, you're not. No, you're not ready. <laughs> but you're panicking. This was in Maury's bag. No, that isn't hers. We're sure it's hers. We can't open it though. Oh, I have the burn right. phone. We thought maybe you could uh, try a couple common combinations, see if it unlocks. Please, try the phone. Unless she had another phone. <laughs> a double life. I mean, wh why is it important though? Like, what, what would be on that phone that they would need? And hence, ring a bell. Fuck. Memories. Same woman from 1979. She's back. Take a left up there. Have an age a day. Mm. I'll tell you where to go. It's like she knew. Take a photo. She of a good profile. <laughs> oh, it's where the bar was. And... Stupid. This is fucking crazy. There's a raven. Which I think, I still think it wasn't there ever. Is she there? Huh? The fact that she, like, Jeez. take away the whole she's yeah, death or something away, like she would be willing to kill face. someone or put yeah, someone at risk for that. Oh, she will be dead. I know she's a piece of shit. Well, you know, we have to trust each other. Because you hear a lot of stories. Like big pharmaceutical companies, a lot of them, they, they test their drugs in lower income countries. More likely to take the money, less likely to complain. I don't know, maybe even reluctant to report the side effects, or, or less likely to even notice them. She's aware. The risk. There is another edge to that as well, that it offers them access to medication and procedures. Don't try to they fucking, you know, 
defend so this. Smart. I guess it's kind of like where this opportunity is. Where it's going to you. Do you actually need it? That's why I'm particularly grateful for this. We'll be good to go. And Dr. Ruiz will perform the surgery herself? Yeah. I would assume she would not be fine with this, so... <laughs> but like, what, you're gonna do it? Are you even registered to do it? Have you ever seen this phone? Did your mom have it, maybe? No, I haven't. I mean, mom uses pictures of cakes. That's right, she did, didn't she? So probably not hers. It's not hers. He's getting obsessed with this. Did she had something yet she was hiding from me? Oh, you might... Oh, oh. Do you remember the story Frederick? that I told you about that uh, the one who thought that his wife was having an affair and he technically killed the, his wife and the lover? Do you yeah. think this is a story? Maybe. Like the jealousy, the thing that his, uh, his wife had a second wife. Sure we'll see. <laughs> That's scary. Like the cat is trying, the cat is trying to kill him or something. Sorry, Jones. Jones. It's obs he's obs he's gonna be obsessed with what happened. Something you did that's in the back of your mind. Ugh. Are you fucking joking? Okay, no, it's leaving this under his fucking <laughs> pillow. Revenge. It's a gift. Sorry, I'm throwing away the sheets, and we might have to move. Displacement. <laughs> I don't know the story of the black cat, but it's like a murderous cat. Yeah. It's when you direct your more intense reactions towards something that doesn't feel threatening, so you get to react. You don't risk significant consequences. And the pole in was most like me and his wife. You would take it out on a cat. Let's see, I wanted something better. Sublimation. You pour your energy into kick <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's what happens to him. Oh, he's gonna get killed by the cat. He's got scratch marks. <laughs> What about his face? Oh. I was talking! I was fucking talking! Jesus! So yeah, the the ghosts are like, you need to talk about me, you need to say what happened to me. Kinda like he said, like, mom is there, so I should talk about her. Whenever he starts talking about something else, one of his kids has a, a mm. appear. Hey! Focus, Focus. man! <laughs> it's gonna be a fight to the death. The cat. Something like that, and the cat is gonna push him. <laughs> well, the cat is probably not really there. No, no but the thing the is, king. his boyfriend can't see him. True, I think he's just imagining it. He took a picture of it and I wonder if we look at the picture again, yeah, there's, there's no no picture, nothing yeah. on it. Yep. Yes. Mm. I'm looking for Roger Usher. Why? I'm a Medicare fraud investigator and I'm here because you work at Fortunato. Uh, please, I just want to get to the bottom of some things, set some things right, please. Come in. <sighs> I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, if Madeline got rid of her because she keeps doing what she wouldn't want her to do. Thank you. Consent forms for a drug trial. See, a lot of these people apparently didn't sign these forms themselves. Mm. I believe some of these signatures are forged. I do know my husband, and if he had any idea that any of this was going on, he would have taken action. See, that's the thing. Your signature is here. Mm. They're faking the whole thing. They don't really care if he ends up in jail because of this. It isn't your signature. She's not saying that, and this is not on the record. You said that from the start, right? Yes, I cannot recall if I did or if I did not sign these particular papers. Madeline, what do we do? <laughs> he doesn't, I mean, he is in a tight spot. Depending on what he does, Everybody he could lose his job, lose us. his opportunity. Yeah. Or he could take that much. and manipulate it so he ends up on top. We both got a boss, don't we? Not if you change your mind. If you do recall, Call yeah, me. like I mean, on their own maybe, but I'm pretty sure Madeline is gonna get a hold of that. that and... About the forms, people. You know, they think that medicine happens in a vacuum. Well, they have no respect for what it takes to develop and test and market a drug. The real lab is the real world, because in the real world there are side effects and surprises and anomalies. We weather all of it. So their dick can stay hard a little bit longer, or they can kick that headache a little sooner. Stop with this self-justification, man. My signature was forged. You a team player, right? Hmm. If you want to help the company, you gotta shut up. Because if you come to me, you tell me that your name is forged on an important internal document. Well, then you're not on the team at all. This isn't just about sticking together. This is about forming Fuck a off. fucking wall. Oh my god. Well, you see that where you learned that? that yeah. I am the commanding officer, and I don't want to hear anything out of your mouth that isn't sir, yes sir. Oh my god. Do you god. get me? Parallel, or you just repeating what he okay. used to be told? The last episode, we said 
He learned from him yeah. how to be him. Yes, that means that now he, no. he is willing will to fuck them pain. over so the company There's doesn't the crumble. These clerical errors, they're from before you showed your true potential. Before I took you under Last my wings week. No, we wouldn't forge our signature. You're important to us. Now. Right? You're in the officer's club now, son. Yeah, back when you so were you nothing. Relax. You just remember whose team you're on. You'll be fine. It's manipulation, man. But he's doing what he's being told and he, he, he will end up on top. This industry is ugly, Roderick. Doesn't have to. Jesus Christ, they forge your signature. You say a Fortunato, they'll never respect you. You just ate a spoonful of their own shit. You can't be part of the club, no, you can't be unequal. Not when they've watched you eat their shit. One episode she says to follow along and learn and now she's saying the contrary. How she wishes she could be in his shoes and do the man's job. And you are going to keep eating that shit. And you're gonna make Rufus Griswold think it's your favorite food. And then you're gonna call this number. You're going to become best friends uh, with August Dupin. There's something behind that. There's gotta be something else. I know you've been through a lot and I know what I signed up for. You've always been very clear about your recreational time. Don't complain about the drugs. It's getting to be a thing. Oh. Leave while you have time. Don't do it, Jules. I'm not saying just say no. I'm saying I'm worried about you. He's lost two Slow siblings down, and no, killed a cat. I didn't see this. It's nice. It's fancy. It's like a artisanal brewery or something. Yeah, well, it's going to change again shortly. <laughs> Boyfriend just resigned. He's dead and he doesn't know it. I'm sorry. Wow. To that. I want some drugs. I'm going through a rough time. And Maury, you know, well, Maury, she's melted, you know. <laughs> it turns out she has well, a right. phone and... Stick to the classics. A few bumps a day till the edge wears off. Fuck! Oh, cat! Get that cat! What cat? Okay, yeah, Fuck. there's no cat. I wonder it's if they dry. see the marks though. Uh, oh! Ow! Uh, it's the eye itself, not even the skin around so, it. I'm just gonna take oh. this cocaine if that's alright. Bye! <laughs> when it comes to the boyfriend, hearing him say that, you know, stop the drugs, fuck, he's dead to me. He doesn't know it yet, but he's dead to me. I'm like, oh, I feel less bad about this. Yeah. Get golden, and we'll see after the workout. He's right there. But she recognizes her, so is she gonna start obsessing over this? And that's one thing to hire someone to play a fantasy. That's another for the fantasy to be in your everyday life. Which it has been. The fuck. I can't find it anywhere. That pre drive? It's there. They leave little gifts. Usually to teach you how to hunt. It's harmless. Harmless, yeah. His eye. That look normal. You gotta take it back. The cat's a fucking psychopath. Love that she has a, a bell collar. A bell collar, sorry. She's the cat. Mm. She's in the walls. Mm, she's everywhere. What? are actually apex predators, you know? It's all about hunting. You hear that? They can Kids. In their spines. They eat their prey to get to a real, an essential <laughs> amino acid. <laughs> it's a... I'm sorry, I, I, had to, I have to laugh because it reminds me too much. Oh. Uh, it reminded me too much of Scary Movie, but not that. Yeah. Not yeah. that. Die if there is no cat. He's jumping from his window. Oh yeah. Well, he's gonna fall. <laughs> he's got your <mural> ear. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> Where is thy fucking cat? I decided to expose the brick wall. I want to have open space! <laughs> See, the, the, the light changed from his POV. Oh. <laughs> Let's 
They have the drugs. Yeah. Yep. You're getting obsessed and it's gonna kill you. nothing it's just all the different drugs that he took <laughs> the fucking cat is gonna rub it in his face <laughs> with the fucking gucci uh gucci neck uh, gucci color yeah color asshole asshole <laughs> oh damn so yeah i'm gonna have to look into the black cat story from edgar on Paul. after every episode i mean he's really good with the fact that people are just uh, paranoia with the paranoia, the fact that they think that something or someone is there, but nothing is there, which is crazy considering how he died. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, Napoleon, what syphilis? Uh, if I remember correctly, the last sightings they had of him, like he was, he looked drunk and he, he was kind of paranoid, and he. A lot of people like there's a an unsolved mystery about his death because like a lot of people think that maybe he was murdered or something, but like they can't really say. It's 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 crazy. We we have to look it up. Unsolved mysteries and shit. But that's not the point. <laughs> this episode. <laughs> yeah, my my. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, but I think that fact, if you mix up different kind of drugs, trauma, guilt grief the fact that uh, he killed his boyfriend uh, black cat also well every death is linked to a decision his mm. decision was to indulge in the success yeah take all these drugs despite people telling him that he should lay off literally like i would feel bad for the boyfriend if i didn't know he was about to be dumped because he Asked to because stop. Because he yeah. tried to just take it slow. Which is a per. It's it's a great demand. I mean, is the, the fact is, he wasn't saying to stop the drugs completely. He said, "I knew what I was in for, but until now, you had it under control. You're not in control right now." And the, the thing is, Napoleon as a character is the one that showed the most emotions. And I think the fact that he took that many drugs is also because he felt those emotions. There was a lot about him that was intense. And his bad choice was to bury those emotions down by taking all those drugs, which led to the death of the cat. So once that happened, the rest was the consequences of that. You kill the cat, so now you're basically gonna face the consequences. You're gonna have those visions of the cat you killed. It's not gonna let you go, it's gonna hunt you down. You hunted it, you lashed out at the cat because all your grief for your brother, because it was for the brother back then, uh, you know, the cat jumped on him and he was like, oh, fuck off, because he didn't want the cat to be in his way. He did what his dad did, which is misplace his anger, misplace his emotions, put it on the cat, and he lashed out and killed the cat probably because when he was drugged and stuff, he needed to... Uh, yeah, be pissed at something, and it was easy to Lash be pissed at, at the cat. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, not so easy when the cat fights back, and when the cat is uh, also hunting you down, there are consequences. It's not because you think that you can do whatever you want with no repercussions, that there are no mm. repercussions. So, I think he faced that this episode. And again, it's not like someone pushed him off the fucking rail. He chose to go after the cat. Yeah. He couldn't let it go. He couldn't just accept that, okay, that's how the cat is. No, he got angry and he fucking went after him with Mjolnir. And like, he, he was so intense, like he didn't even see, like, he didn't even think that this could be dangerous. Like, how can you go to your balcony and take a swing at the cat and swing so hard that you fucking end up on the other side of the rent? The thing is, the fact that he was so, so full on drugs, so paranoid right now, and so paranoid. paranoid, paranoid, thank you. And so focused on the cat, I don't think that he even saw uh, that he was at the end of his balcony. He just saw mm. the cat. So he just went for it, you know? Mm. In a way though, out of all the siblings, he was still kind of my favorite so far as, <laughs> it's hard to say favorite considering how they well, all I mean, are. He seems to be the only one who kind of expressed some sort of real sentimental, uh, attachment well, to his saying, siblings. That's why I'm saying that his emotions were too much. Like he, he, he had. I, I said before that all of these characters 
have to live in the excess, but I think that he felt in the excess as well. He had a hard time controlling his anger, his grief, and and that's why he dealt with it with drugs. Yeah. But uh, still, it, it uh, it's true though that he seemed to be the only character in this family who seemed to care about his siblings. He genuinely was hurt by what was going on. He rebelled uh, when they told him, you know, you need to follow the rules, tell the statement, and and you know. We need to keep going as a company because this is all that matters to most of them. The company, the family doesn't really matter. Kind of like the speech that Roderick learned from his ex-employer. We're a family and stuff, but that's not true. It doesn't apply even to this family. Mm. They're not a family. They are employees that were added to this this group of, of people that work together to make Fortunato work has nothing to do with siblings, has nothing to do with relationships. They don't care. Yeah. And at, when people die, they don't give a shit. They're weirded out that it's happening and they're pissed that someone is going after the family and that it puts the company at risk, but most of them are focused on their little life. So. You know, uh, Verna said something when Napoleon was looking for the black cat. I mean, he was so focused on the black cat that she said, oh, there's old ones that they're gonna die if they, nobody help them. Uh, take these two, they're siblings, they need to stay together. Yeah, I noticed that. They cannot yeah. be separate. I mean, it kind of applies to the siblings right now, right? It's like, like they, every, they, they should stay together, they should be together, but they're all separate. They're all divided. Well, in this case, it's not so much that because he did help in his own way, his siblings, like he, he gives them drugs when they ask, he asks them to but come over. is it to... really helping them or it's just like, oh, you're, it's his way of I don't, I don't want you to burden me, so just That's his away. way of coping, so I don't think it's, it's that with him. I think it's mostly that every time they are about to do something led by their, uh, their bad emotions, so obsession, guilt, uh, just do something that's iner uh, inherently bad and evil. Replace your boyfriend's cat instead of telling the truth about what happened because you made a mistake. That's it, bad. It reminds me of one of uh, Reddit stories. The fact that the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the boyfriend said that he replaced his girlfriend's cat by another because this cat was just evil in his eyes. Oh, uh, no. Really? That's, that's fucked up. And even if the person who's you know, who owns the cat, doesn't see it, it's fucked up by itself. Like, you it should is. really feel guilty about that. So every time they are about to make the choice, she kind of goes into, you know, giving them the facts, that, you know, giving them an opportunity to back down. She did the same with Victorine. You know, she was about to sign the papers and she she started talking about the companies that do their trials in uh, in in uh, underdeveloped countries or something with people with no money because they are more more likely to accept it and because not it's their you know, only hope not complain yeah. and stuff like everything that would make Victorine feel bad about what she's about to do. But what they do when when she says that to them is defend themselves. Same as the the um, first employer that who worked at. Uh, Fortunato. Mm -hmm. It's like you're being confronted with something that you've done, which is bad. In their case, it was it with Fortunato and, and uh, what's his name? Griswold? Griswold. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, fr you're forging signatures so you can have test subjects and burying it, uh, uh, you know, so that no people ask questions and stuff. Like, it's illegal and you know it's illegal, you know it's really bad and you're putting people at risk and killing people because of that, but you're still gonna do it because you want to advance fast. You don't want to go by the law, you, go, you don't want to follow the rules. So when someone comes to you and tells you what you've done, you don't really care because you were aware of that already. Yeah. What you're gonna do though is since in the back of your mind you know it's bad, you're gonna make reasons for what you did it. You're gonna, you know, come up with, uh, oh, uh, excuses. Oh, you know, it's not so bad. Victorine, especially. Justify or redirect what they're saying to uh, another version. Basically, she. Well, Griswold was saying, you know, oh, it's not so much about that. Like, we have to do this because this is how it works. The people, they don't know what's going on. Like, no. this is excuses. Like, Victorine, the same thing. Real trial is out there in the real world where people have side effects and they got, the, uh, they got the good, they got the bad. 
And if you want to have real results, you need to put it in the real world. Victorine was no. like, oh, <laughs> actually, it's giving them better, good things. They need it. And so Victorine is full of shit. And I actually can't wait for her to face the consequences of oh. her actions. But seriously. <laughs> but listen, and let me finish this. Yeah, Napoleon, same thing again. Like, willing to replace your boyfriend's cat because you killed the first one. And not, not giving a shit that you're doing this for the wrong reasons. You're not there to save a cat or anything. You're pretending to do something good, but in fact, you're doing something evil. They're not so. even willing to admit, oh my gosh, I killed your cat. I don't know what happened, and I'm really fucking sorry. And like Verna was putting you into know? <laughs> perspective, you know how the, those cats matter and how she cares about them and it's not good that they're about to die so you should try to save them but he's the one that killed the cat in a high stupor because he didn't give a shit because he misplaced his anger and he's there with no guilt at all and he just wants to you know cover up his mistake he doesn't give a shit so every time but it's that she's gonna try to you know make it make them realize what's going on and they're not gonna realize it so in the end their death is on them when they're saying, you know, this woman is to blame for what's going on. No, you are the one holding the gun. You're literally the one that... Roderick is the one with Madeline who created this vibe, this this entire environment for the family, who put them against each other because of your high expectations and the whole idea that this is a company, that you need to you know, work for it. And then the siblings did the rest because of who they are. Do you think that she was saying... that? Verna was saying, oh, this cat is not to sell. She's already uh, put aside for someone because she w the cat wasn't real. Well, again, it's like, I'm going to tell you, no, you can't do that. Like, she's not actively trying to kill them. She's literally, really, literally putting obstacles in their path. But if they are willing to go the extra mile to get it, and the cat wasn't there. I know. So, yeah, it's not available. <laughs> and it's not, so, it's not a cat it that he matter. can buy. It belonged to someone. He killed him already. Yeah. But yeah, they are probably... I want to see him look into his phone and see that there is a photo of the woman, but no cat. Because <laughs> <laughs> she would be on the photo. She appears on every, yeah. uh, you know, every photo and camera videos and stuff that and, they have. And she knows. The fact that she looked at the camera and she knows, come, I know that you're watching me. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. I want to know how it ends. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Like, right now, it's obvious that Roderick feels he has to tell the truth about every one of his kids. And that's why whenever he sees a vision of them, it's because he starts talking about something else. And they're here to remember him. Like, no, you need to talk about me now. Talk about what happened to me. And then he moves on to the other kid. And if he doesn't, the EC, the he sees the apparition. Like, so, stop, stop being in denial it's and admit guilt, yeah. what happened. Well, he did say that Napoleon was like him in that way. Denial, just pretend there's no mm. issue. But now there's no doing that anymore. You but gotta I mean, face the music. For some people, it is true that it is easier to be in denial and say that something didn't happen. Or if, if you don't talk about it, mm. it doesn't exist. Well, guilt is yeah. hard to face. So... For some people, I get that, but when you are the reason for so many issues, so many deaths and stuff, denial is bullshit. You don't deserve the denial at this point. Like You deserve to face your mistakes and, and deal with the consequences. And um, I'm pretty sure that they're about to set things in motion back in the past. Like They're about to switch things. Like Madeline keeps judging Roderick for the stuff he does on his own at the company, but then she yeah. twists what he does and turns it into a weapon. Last episode it was, you know, he's telling you to take that position, learn about it so you can become him, which he, he is doing, and he will become him in the future, obviously. Uh, and now that he's, you know, he's listening to his boss, and his boss does give him good advice for how to work in this shitty company in the shitty way that they do. Is this advice here? Yeah. So I think he's gonna, he needs to pretend, I, I think that's what he's gonna do, he's gonna pretend that he follows along with whatever they're saying, oh, and then he's gonna backstab He's him. gonna be an informant? Well, she said to be, well, <laughs> that would be funny, really funny, but um, I still hang on to my idea that there's no informant, and if there is, uh, I kind of hope it's not Juno, because it would be too obvious. Uh, the but I do like your idea about the granddaughter. The granddaughter but, but is I mean, one. I, I mean, for, to, to me, the most obvious choices will be Juno or Would she be intelligent enough 
and like she's high on those drugs like now she just said she doesn't want to use them anymore but he's kind of charming her into taking them again like if she was was really aware of all the bad stuff that's going on would she do that i don't know maybe i think it's it would be too obvious and in a way it it doesn't fit with her character she wouldn't be capable of that if we need someone that's more intelligent more uh and again i'm gonna say like something is going on with madeline in the basement and um uh, well, I'm expecting I mean, her to be... She's mm -hmm. trying to get out. <laughs> if no? it's like the story, she's supposed to be buried. Like she's dead, but she's not. Although technically everything that happened in episode one was also sort of like the story. Their mom died from an illness. They buried her, but she wasn't dead. So she came back to life to take down someone with her. Mm -hmm. So everything that happened in episode one is kind of like the story. And then we'll see what happens. So maybe but this is something else. We'll see. It's still a story of House of Usher, mm. but with with a twist. And since every episode kind of fits the story of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, who knows what they're going to do mm. with it. I want to talk about uh, Frederick and his obsession with the burner phone. Well, there's not much to talk about there. Unless uh, when we get to his episode, I'm sure there's going to be something there. It, it yeah. makes sense that he would start to get obsessed with what happened there because he doesn't know why was she at the party he's not about to acknowledge that he's you know she feels unfulfilled in her marriage that she would go to drg mm -hmm. so right now it's just funny we'll see when it turns into obsession oh, oh you're talking about what if his story is the one you you said like if he but finds i mean out. i heard about a story where but uh, the thing about the wife, cheating the, the wife cheated with someone and the husband killed both of them the thing about the so. cheating could be tammy ah true she is you're starting right. to get obsessed with the whole candy was around you she could start to be like oh i'm not fulfilling you anymore she's not by the way like i wouldn't be surprised if he if he found a better life with someone else because her, his wife is not giving him what he wants but still she could start being obsessed with the mm. whole you're seeing someone behind my back and she starts getting so obsessed with this that she goes you know over the limit and does something bad True. So it could be her story. All right. But I mean, I'm pretty sure that Frederick has put an obsession with the phone and his wife. He's it's gonna, he's gonna, gonna, come he's back gonna become and, ugly. It's gonna come back. His is the pit and the pendulum. Okay. So like, Telltale Heart is Victorine. I am. Goldbug is Tammy. Mm. Pit and the pendulum is Frederick. But I don't know the story Pit and the Pendulum, so. Me neither. But I, mean, I think Goldbug, like I said, yeah. I'm gonna look up the Black Cat story to see the resemblance between uh, what just happened. Edgar's story and what happened. But yeah. I mean, it is pretty much uh, par paranoia, right? With him? Yeah. It was obsession. Mm. Anger. Not paranoia. No. It's not paranoia when the cat is actively trying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> paranoia would be like... I, I don't know. The Telltale Heart, tell, tell heart story, basically. Well, yes, uh, that depends. If she kills her wife, like, let's say, at the beginning or of the story or something, and then she tries to cover it up, and she starts seeing her, and that would be paranoia. Like, someone is going to find out, someone is going to find out this is what paranoia. What I mean, it's not that she's going to seize her, it's she's going to maybe hurt her heart well that if if we go completely with the story but this is next episode so we'll see let's not talk about next episode yet so thank you guys we'll st we'll stop here because i'm starting to have a headache i need to go yeah. take some time all right <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us if you want to see the next two episodes right away they are on patreon already you can check them out the link is in the description below and if you don't want to well the next one will be on youtube next week guys so see you then bye